Are you ready? ready? Let's, Let's go. go. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You're now tuned into another amazing edition of Sonya on Air. I am your host, Sonya Hudson Payne, and I start off each and every single episode by saying this is another great episode. Every time I enter the, into the studio, it's intentional. I'm excited. I can't wait to talk to you. A high level of anxiety consumes me because I always have phenomenal interviewees or guests, celebrity guests, celebrity conversations to bring to you. Joining me today, I have none other than actor Jamel Howard. He first played on The First Purge, um, Luke Cage Brains, that was the name of the episode. He was also on season four of Power. Also, Orange is the New Black and Tales, the Trap Queen episode. I don't know if you've seen Tales on BET, but it was an amazing series, um, executive produced and I think created by Irv Gotti. Shout out to Murder, Inc. They're making a comeback for 2020. Um, joining me later on in the show, I have another actress Andrea Rachel Parker now we used to love to hate her she was on season five of power she played Tyreek's girlfriend I'm going to talk about that but most recently she played on um, Wu-Tang and American Saga that's on Hulu another amazing channel I think I really slept on and it wasn't until this um, series premiered that I decided to get Hulu yeah, and I got it legally too. <laughs> so that's a good thing. And if you haven't seen her on HBO's The Deuce, make sure that you check that out. I really love that see that um that show. I believe they're in season two, I believe, but we'll we'll confirm that when um Andrea joins me later on in the studio. I like because I grew up in an era in New York City where forty second street was a place at first where you didn't want to be because it was consumed by drugs and prostitution then it became this place in the 80s that we all used to love to frequent um, because of the movies and then you can take your pictures I still have my old school pictures from high school uh, with my boo thing <laughs> thanks <laughs> we used to take pictures on 42nd street so if you haven't checked out these amazing shows that my two guests have been on you are definitely sleeping and you'll also sleeping if you haven't subscribed to my streaming platforms please you can catch me on spotify itunes google podcast podcast go iheart radio YouTube, and you can also go to my website, www.sanyaonair.com. So Jamel Howard, he's going to be joining us via phone in just a few short minutes. I'm so excited to talk to him. I'm always excited to talk to individuals that I see on television or I listen to their music or I'm reading their books because what you see in this realm of Hollywood and entertainment, it may not be exactly who these individuals are. So for me, it is a blessing and also an honor to be able to just kind of pick their brains to figure out like what's going on behind the cameras. What do they do on their downtime? I know, you know, the Sonya that I present to you, <laughs> you know, streaming and when you're listening to me on on the radio there's a whole other side how many of you have alter egos I know I do I have Sonia Hudson Payne okay that's the professional one that's the really really nice one right why do I sound bipolar <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> don't front like we all don't have a little bipolarism but then there's also I'm um, Denise Denise, she likes to have fun. She's the life of the party. Then you have Nisi. Nisi is the one, she is mad. She's tried to calm down, but something has taken over her. And you know, she just might catch a case and she has to call a friend on the phone and say, listen, I need you to talk me out of this because I'm about to break a few necks. So we have three personalities just living in this one fabulous body. So this is why I like to talk to people that you see on television you listen to their music because that's not who they all are you know we have so many different lifestyles to us and we're just trying to make it work in this world that we live in this crazy crazy world you know I want to really talk about something real and I wasn't planning on talking about this um can you 
but I, we have our first guest joining us so i'm gonna have to talk about this in just a few moments just hold on for just a minute why don't you just give me one second let me just pass this off to my en engineer so he can make sure that that is the first guest that is calling before we bring jermel howard live to you on sign you he has an amazing story just like my conversation last week with marquan smith you know there are so many individuals who start from humble beginnings and where they land and it's not even their destination but where they currently sit it's such a far cry from where they started. And I really appreciate individuals like that who can persevere through life's challenges and obstacles as children. You know, we're born and oftentimes we're dealt a lifestyle um, that we just kind of inherited. And I love talking to individuals who persist persist through life challenges. Those are the kind of people that I want in my inner circle. I really don't like individuals who are just given every single thing and they don't have to work for anything. There's something about their character that just seems to be um, an arrested development. Who remembers arrested development <laughs> back? What was that, the 80s or 90s? But there's something about individuals who um, just don't have to work for anything. There isn't a level of humility, uh, but when you find individuals who faced so many challenges and just made it to wherever they wanted to make it to, those are the individuals that I really, really respect. They come to you with a whole cake full of nice ingredients. Let me just tell you where my brain just went for a minute because I'm such a foodie. <laughs> That's why I mentioned cake. And then when I started talking about cake, I just had a picture of a pineapple upside down cake made by my grandmother who, you know, lived in the South. Rest in peace. Rest in peace to Georgia Andrews, my amazing grandmother. But I'm a foodie. And as you continue to listen to Sonia on air, you will learn so much more about me. This is only the second episode of season seven. I'm so, so excited. I'm telling you to be back in the studio. What I'm going to do is that might have been the guest. I think I'm going to call him back. And just to make sure if that was him, I hope it wasn't a, a bill collector trying to call me. <laughs> they will get hung up on like real quick. Hold on. This is what happens in live radio. Just hold on for a second. Hi, Jamel. Hi, hold on for a second. Okay. The show is live. I'm going to bring you in in just a few short seconds. Okay. Okay. So this is what happens in live podcasting, live radio. I'm so glad that we're always streaming because you get an opportunity to see what happens behind the scenes. And, you know, this is such a difference between the traditional world of entertainment where you're watching television or you're listening to music. You don't see what happens behind the camera, you know, but I always tell my engineer, don't cut off anything. Don't, don't, don't shut off the video. Don't shut off the audio because there are so many um, emerging and aspiring podcasters and radio show hosts who inbox me on social media asking me how this show has managed to make it to season seven. So I want you to see everything. So like I told you, um, joining me, my very first guest is Jamel Howard. He is an actor. He started off rapping. So I just want to figure out what that transition was about. But Jamel, how are you? I'm doing well. Let's just make sure that this sound is is okay. Um, just hold on for just a moment because it sounded kind of low. I think, yeah, I think it's all the way. I think it's all the way. Okay, if you could just do me a favor and just speak loudly into your phone, okay? Sure. Okay, okay. So, you know, you have a testimony um, because where you started is definitely not where you are today. I just want to talk about your early beginnings growing up um, on Long Island, um, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but as a kid, you were homeless. Um, you moved around from shelter to shelter. Um, you were also introduced into the foster care system, and you had a near-death experience that I'm not sure what happened. But um, am I correct in saying that those things happened to you early on in life? Um, so at that point, she was, got locked up. 
locked up, and me and my brothers were split up into different foster care. And um, from that point, you know, we was in shelters, we was in, you know, and then got into the system of foster care, and then I ended up landing in a spot in Long Island in Freeport um, after moving around for different shelters in Hempstead and Westbury and, and things like that. So, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, that sounded... Okay, I think it was the cord that was going on. Oh, wow. So, okay, so you went through all of that. So when was the pivoting moment where you decided that that wasn't going to be the definition of who you are and you got interested in, uh, let's say, the world of rap or the world of entertainment? Well, I've met a group of people that... um, I've met a group of people in um, Long Island who were... um, we all decided to put a rap group together. Um, but I knew that already in my mind, I already knew that my circumstances was not going to define me at all. You know, I, w- I wasn't going to be bound by circumstance. I was looking for opportunities no matter what. Wow. So I knew I was going to be doing something mm-hmm. to find myself. Man. So I had to just keep searching for self. So I, I went into the music and started rapping and, and realized a lot of people was like, yo, you good. Mm-hmm. And 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 the music thing became an outlet for me to to just voice, you know, who I was and and, and what I was going through, mm-hmm. and and it, and it caught people. It started to catch people. So um, after a while, short while, I believe that I I can take this music and make it into something. And and sure enough, I did. I um got into uh, uh, the battle game a lot okay. and rap battling and I battled a couple people and got my name noticed and I was in front of record labels hmm. battling people and I actually um, got noticed by um, Fat Joe's uncle um, and um, he uh, from there from that point they, they pulled me up to the studio and then I got into the music. Oh, wow. Now, that is definitely um, a testimony. And, you know, you're from Long Island. We call that in New York City, the other borough, you know, but I'm forgive you for that one. I'm from Brooklyn. (laughs) Brooklyn. So we know that, you know, New York City is kind of the foundation or the blueprint of everything great in music, especially in hip hop. So back then when you started your rap career, who are the people or the rappers that you kind of looked up to and modeled your style after? Uh, back then, I was a big fan of Biggie. Um, was was I was a huge fan of Biggie, mm-hmm. um, Jay Z. Um, I was Nas. Um, Most Def was somebody that I, I looked up to. Mm-hmm. Um, Jada Kiss, um, Scarface. Nice. You know, um, Outkast at that time. Um, so I, I had a I had an array of people that. You know, that back then the music was so diverse. Yeah. Like you can get, you know, get different energy from different things right. and, di- and different artists. But um, yeah, so that that was pretty much. I had a wide array, and I listened to a lot of reggae back then too, really? classic reggae. Yeah. Oh, you was one of those boys up against the wall with the girl yeah. at the party. Just, <laughs> that was you. Just, <laughs> just, just standing there and letting them whine. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was. I wasn't even moving. I don't even move. I, I understand. I won't tell you what type of girl I was back then. That's another story. And my mama hey. might be listening. Hey. <laughs> so we'll save that. Yes. But what made you change your mind? You know, if you were starting off as a rapper, when did you decide to transition off into the world of acting? Well, I, I hit a wall when I I um, basically was in was torn with some people mm-hmm. and realizing that I wasn't making enough money mm-hmm. and I was still like in the street. Right. So I'm, I'm at that, at that point I was like, I, you know, I had my daughters. I was like, I got to figure out something, you know, the, the next move mm-hmm. uh, to, to make something happen. And I met somebody while I was on tour that suggested that, that said, yeah, you should give, you know, the acting thing a try. You got a good look. You know, and you got some personality. You should try that. Right. And I, I never thought about it until then. And um, I, I went into an open audition for a uh, Burger King commercial, mm-hmm. and and I ended up booking it. Like, oh, I booked it. Right, right. So like, and it's, you know, and then I got the check, and I was like, oh, wait a minute, nah, this is <laughs> this is serious. This, yeah, nah, this is real, right. and I don't have to chase nobody. I ain't got to fight. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so I'm like, okay, this this might be it. And um, I met a guy uh, 
that was um, into management at that time. Um, I he talked to an agent and they just gave me like a test run. I went on like five auditions and they and I booked all five. Oh. And they was like, well, maybe you're supposed to be doing this. Right. So, right. And um, that was it from that point. My first, that first thing that I've done after that open audition for that Burger King, mm-hmm. I jumped right into a role with Jodie Foster and nice. uh, Karen Talbot, yeah, called The Brave One. Nice. And um, that was like, I never was an extra. I always had a role. So that was like, you know, I jumped right into a real role, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. Um, and, and from that point, it was, you know, snowball effect. I, it was it. See, I, I appreciate the fact that I don't I don't think I hope that you understand, you know, what you just said, um, just about trusting and allowing, you know, an opportunity to present itself because somebody saw something in you that you didn't see in yourself. You know, for all of those who are tuning in, you know, step out and dream outside of the box. You know, I'm, I'm currently mentoring a young girl who is in high school and she has such a personality. And I'm telling her, you know, I think that you should go into acting. And she doesn't believe it at all. I said, OK, do me this one solid favor. If another person tells you the same thing. That tells you that that is a direction that you need to be headed into. So I'm glad that you didn't get stuck yeah. saying, you know, listen, I'm going to be a well, rapper for the rest of my life. And you listen to someone redirect your purpose and your passion. Yeah, well, you know what it is? A lot of people got to learn how to read the universe. Yes. You know, understand? And, and when I learned the gift of reading the universe and allowing things to happen, I start to understand no matter how bad it, or good a situation is it, it, it's reason behind right. you know and then you start to realize that you know the the life is happening for you not to you mm. you know what I'm saying and everybody looking at it like damn this happened to me you know this happened to me but really it's happening for you you just can't you just don't see the reason that's yet, so true you know? I like so, that uh, mm-hmm yeah, it's very it's very true, and I, when I learn how to read the universe and read you know read signs that 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 the universe was aligning and God was aligning, then you know everything makes more sense a little later. But it, it makes sense. You just got to trust it. So true, you know, and, and hopefully you know as t- as twenty twenty approaches, I can't even believe we're at twenty twenty. You know, I hope that most more people start to understand the power of their words and how the universe aligns, and you just have to meet the universe where it currently is. So you know, thank you for capturing that moment. But I'm not sure if you know, but you've played a lot of characters that we absolutely love to hate. Has anybody told you that yes. before? <laughs> How, yes, do, how yes. do you feel about that? And do people, are people able to kind of detach your on-air um, acting personalities from the real you? Uh, depends on where I am, okay. I could say. Because, um, for instance, like the, the show Orange is the New Black mm-hmm. is, um, you know, I'm, I'm Jam- Janae Watson's boyfriend, the girl that run track, and I'm the reason she's in jail, mm-hmm. and a lot of people know that I had her <laughs> robbing check cash in places, <laughs> and and she got caught, so right. when I'm when I'm riding on the train in New York, people tend to be like, yo, oh, you the dude, man, you left that girl, and you know, uh-huh. so, so it's, it's cool though, because, you know, people identify with the characters so that's that's the main thing that is important that is Um, that that is important that your character your character definitely resonates with people i recently saw i think it was last week i caught um the new i don't even think it's new it was on bet i think i saw it on my fire stick um deadly dispatch you are amazing amazing in that i mean menacing i was like why is he treating her like that all she's just trying to do is you know find out who killed her best friend (laughs) right 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 she trying to find out you know she's just trying to find that out i'm over here yeah you was extra got guns in the face and everything (laughs) You were no. extra, but you were also extra on power. Um, we were kind of happy, you know, to see, you know, your demise. But, you know, we wanted to make sure that you were still acting, you know, after that. But how was it working with um, 50 Cent on power? Oh, uh, man, it was amazing. You know, a lot of people have their own, their own, uh, you know, thing about meeting 50 and they, they have their own opinion about him. I, I truly had a great experience with, with the brother, you know. Um, we spent a lot of time hanging, you know. I I'm basically was on I'm Team Canaan, so 
you know, I, I um, was brought into that by Canaan, uh -huh. brought into the uh, circle of um, power by Canaan. So my character, anyway. Um, so I get to hang with him. I had to, got a chance to hang with him a lot and mm. actually just talk and kick it with him. You know, he's he's a real cool dude, man. He's he, he, he got a level head, knows what he's doing, and he has a lot of information that that a lot of people don't have access to. Right. You know, so when he's talking a lot. You're supposed to listen, you know, yeah. people like that. So, you know, I learned a lot from them just hanging up, hanging with them. So what did you exactly listen to and what did you learn? Because I believe when powerful people are in the room, especially when you're seated right next to them, um, you should, you know, kind of absorb everything that you can. So what did he say and what did he speak into you that you still hold with you today? Um, that, Like one time I showed him something that uh, I showed him something that I was doing. Uh, that I actually wrote and created myself, mm -hmm. and um, he was just telling me a little bit about Mar you know what's what's the important part about it, you know, and he just was like, yeah, you know, I, I believe that the, you know the marketing is very important, you know, you should <laughs> try to approach it, you know, the marketing is a great idea, you should approach it, you know, so the way he was basically what he was saying was like the, the project. Has, that I wrote and that I did has never been done, and mm -hmm. and I should really basically focus on the marketing aspect of it, and you know because it hasn't been done yet. But he's he's dope, man. I've learned so much other stuff from him that you know some stuff is just you keep to yourself. But it's he's a great individual, man. I think that he's he's a beacon for a lot of people, yeah. and, and whether they see it or not, a lot of people might act you know, whatever, because how he get went about getting to where he is. But everybody mm -hmm. has their own path and walk. For exactly. whatever reason they have it it's just it's a matter of where they are now and what you know and their beliefs and their morals now you know True. so um it's a good dude uh, my experience was wonderful working with him. so another amazing individual um someone who also helped shape a culture um, in hip hop. Irv Gotti, um, you were on um, an episode of Trap Queen on BET's Tales. Um, so tell yeah. me about your experience working with another great Irv Gotti. Yeah, yeah, man. Irv was cool too, as well. And I, you know, I he he Irv is like to me he was like a big kid that just figured some new stuff out. Mm -hmm. You know. And he, he was excited for the project, and he should been, cause he, as he should be, because it was dope. Um, the project tells is, you know, they take different songs and make them whole episodes, um, and, which is amazing. You know, you would have unlimited content to work with, mm -hmm. and it sh should be real fun to be able to take any song from back in the days and make it a, a whole yeah, show. Yeah, that was huge. You know, so, yeah, so we, we had a lot of fun shooting that Um our episode was uh, Trap Queens with me, uh, Woody McClain, uh, Michelle Michener, Lance Gross, um, a couple of couple of those guys. You know, and right now they want to take that, actually take that episode and maybe make it bigger, make oh, you know, really? do something else with it. Yeah, it's a question. Um, so you know, I, he was cool, man. Irv, he, Irv had all intentions of um, making a something that was a small idea into something great you know mm -hmm. that's that's that was his focus and he and he's getting there you know so I had a uh, I had a ball shooting with those guys good good it really sounds like you know um the roles that you've landed um they seem to have created a, a nice place in your memory yeah. bank you know something that can make you smile something that you know do you have children that you can probably yes. tell your children, listen, this is what oh, daddy yeah. did, you know, um, it helps shape a culture, but something that you are about to embark upon, I don't know if they've started filming yet, but you mm -hmm. are about to play Tretch in the Lifetime biopic of Salt and Pepper. Is that true? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's we, huge. We, we shooting it, wrapping it up now. So, oh. um, yeah, I um, pl I'm play Tretch uh, from Naughty by Nature. You know, he was married to Peppa, uh -huh. um, and which they just started actually releasing some press on it. I just seen like a CBS news thing saying I'm playing Tretch. And, nice. You know, releasing the people. Um, but it, it's uh, yeah, it was amazing to play any anybody that was an actual icon. Yes. So that, that, that's amazing in itself, especially mm -hmm. me coming from music background and, and Tretch and them uh, were like, Man, forget it. Those were some of the biggest artists I've I've ever 
know. I know. Old people and will forever be, you know, it. <laughs> forever. Get it. Not to mention he's a friend of mine. You know, cool. that's even, that's what made it even crazy. It's like, this is a friend of mine I hang out with, you know. Nice. Oh nice. yeah, yeah, it was amazing. It so, was talk amazing. about that audition process. Um, how did you? What was the audition process for the role? How many times did you have to go in? Where were you when you got the call that you um, landed the role? I was in L.A. and I was actually going to leave and head to New York for something else. And I got a call, and they said, hey, "Listen, they want you to come read for Tretch. And I'm like, "Read for Tretch? And they like. I, no read for the role of Tretch. I'm like, oh, because I was calling him. You know? <laughs> I'm like, what is that about? You right, know? right. But um, so then I go and I said, wait a minute. So is, whose movie is it? And they said, this is Salt and Pepper biopic. I said, okay. Mm-hmm. And 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 I was like, so how many people they have up for the role? Right. And they was like, well, they got like five or six people coming in to read. Mm-hmm. I said, okay, where are they from? Mm-hmm. Oh. California and this and I'm like oh man you know what watch this I went to Home Depot mm-hmm. I bought me a bought me a big chain with a lock on it ah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying yes. I went and grabbed right I went and grabbed my wife beater mm-hmm. threw me a hat threw my, my hat on my scully on right went in there with the wife beater my tattoo showing with the chain on and right. was like what up <laughs> you know what I'm saying it, it was like wait a minute you know this <laughs> Wow. It was like okay, yeah. Um, you know, they had me read. They was just, you know, they can, they can, they can, they can see that I have a connection with right. the character. You know, you can see. You wouldn't hire, you know, Treacher's from the East Coast. He, he's, he's, you know, threaded in the East Coast. Like yeah. you can see, he drips it. Yeah. You know, so you can see that. So you wouldn't hire somebody from California to play right. that role. Right, right, from San oh, Fernando no. Valley. That we're not going to do that. <laughs> you know, we want that to exactly. be. We want this to be authentic here because hip hop is so authentic and you know, the fake resonates. It really does. And That's we can spot right. a fake from a mile away. You know, so did Tretch even have conversations with you about how you should portray him in this new biopic? No, no. He actually didn't have much to do with this. Okay. This was uh, all Salt and Pepper's uh, um, production. So okay. they, they were executive producers. He didn't have much to do with it. Um, so, you know, it, it, I couldn't really, I mean, I already know him mm-hmm. and I've been with him enough to, I can mimic, I'm an actor, so I can mimic people very right. well. And we kind of favor already, you know, so it was, it didn't take much to turn me into him physically, mm-hmm. except for, damn, I had to get to the gym. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> I hate that part. I was, I was like, oh man, this dude had a little six pack back then. Yes, he oh, did. Bro. Yes, he so did. I, I had to go in the gym and just tighten it up a little bit. Right. You know? While but, preparing uh, for the role. Wow. I understand. Yeah, yeah. I, this is huge. So, you know, a lot of the what the media has shown us about the relationship between Tretch and Peppa, you know, has been on the downward spiral, you know, some allegations of physical abuse. What will your character showcase and highlight in this new Salt and Pepper biopic? Well, I think the I think it's important to note that everybody, um, everybody's relationship is different level wise. You don't you know you don't know what people were going through at one hundred percent because nobody's in nobody's bedroom. Right. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. if the outside media and people are in the bedroom with them or in the, you know, wherever they are most of the time when things were going on. So I, I must say that they are, you know, it is the, the love and the, and the strength of, um, of that relationship is seen, you know, so you're going to know that they, that, that the love was there. You know, so it, and that's, that's the main thing, whether together or not, that they, they really, truly did love each other. Yeah. Um, it, which was very important. Yeah, that's that's so important. You know, I'm so glad that a lot of the hip hop icons that I kind of, you know, looked to in the 80s and the 90s, I'm glad that television is starting to understand their relevancy here in today's space. And they're creating more content so that this younger generation, the little old G's, you know, can really see the foundation for this whole big space that we call um, hip hop. So like, are you still are you still doing music? 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, hobby wise, I'm not chasing it like I used to, but um, right now I'm creating. I'm doing a lot of writing and and shooting my own films as well. Nice. So I will definitely incorporate my music, you know, within that. Um, I'm not chasing any record deal, or anything like that. So mm -hmm. what I'm doing will definitely just be for my uh, hobby. Nice, nice. So going back to the Salt and Pepper biopic real quick, when can we expect to see that on Lifetime? I'm not sure. It'll be this year sometime. I'm, I'm not sure that exactly. And you're still filming or has it wrapped already? Um, it's just now wrapping. Okay, okay. So it was filmed out in L.A. or here in New York? Well, we filmed in Canada. Actually. Oh, in Canada? Damn. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Okay. So if you could choose your, your dream role, what would that role be? My dream role would be a role like, um, one of the likings or werewolves on underworld, that type of thing. Really? Or, yep. I, oh, uh, that's, I love to do like character work. Um, like that type of character work, like put on prosthetics and things mm -hmm. and have power and stuff like that like x-men or you know avengers that type of thing marvel right. Right. you know and i've worked on the marvel i've, you know, I've played Shameek in marvel blue cage blue cage amazing but, job uh, yes thank you thank you yeah so i didn't uh, but i didn't get to have any powers or anything so right. i'm looking to come back as someone with powers mm -hmm. you know all those marvel people listening you know, um, things like that. I, those are my favorite type of characters. Nice, nice. You have such an amazing story, an amazing journey. Um, and I know that this story and your genre of being an actor in this whole entertainment and Hollywood space, you know, this is just the beginning for you. So kudos to you. Um, so along with this Salt and Pepper biopic and you filming your own content, anything else that you have coming up that you want to talk about before we wrap up this conversation? Uh, no, um, that's, I mean, there's some other things coming that I can't, I'm not, I, I can't talk about right now, but it, it'll hit the airwaves, so, you nice. know, so, um, that, besides that, um, I, I am filming, well, I just finished filming a, a show that I've created that'll be up and running soon, um, working with, um, Kenan Thompson. Nice. Um, and, um, me, we sh doing some, some work together. And a couple of other things I'm working on as well. So it'll be coming out soon. But for now, everybody, y'all can go to HBO. Make sure y'all watching the movie The First Purge. I'm one of the main characters on that. Yeah, um, another called, character that we love to hate, Jamal. <laughs> another yeah, character yeah, we yeah, love to hate. Exactly. But, you know, someone just entered into the room. Um, I think you know this person. <laughs> She's looking like, huh? Um, she joined Power, I believe it was on season five. She played Tyreek's girlfriend, Andrea Rachel yeah. Parker. Yeah, yeah, of course. She's Rachel, here. Rachel. This is Jamel Howard. <laughs> what? Yes, she's um she's next on 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 my schedule. So I'm going to have a conversation with her. But thank you so much for your candor and thank you for sharing your testimony and thank you for sharing your intellectual capital in this space. I greatly appreciate you and I send you continued blessings as you thank embark you. upon your amazing journey. You take care. Thank, thank you. I appreciate you. You take care too. Thank you. Bye-bye. So there you have it. Another great conversation um, connecting the big OGs to the little OGs, because as you can see, he's played some amazing roles, characters that we absolutely love to hate. He is going to be playing Tretch on the new Salt and Pepper biopic that will be premiering on Lifetime. This is such an amazing space for 2020. I'm so excited about what's about to happen. As you can see, there are so many big OGs that really just resonated the hip hop space, the culture in the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, the early 2000s. And now you're seeing their conversations and their narratives start to explode so that this younger generation, who I love to call the little OGs, can start to see where the foundation was created. But I have another great conversation joining us right now in the studio. So I'm just going to ask this queen to have a seat right here and put on her headphones. Andrea Rachel Parker, such a dope actress. 
Um, like I told you, I, I watch her every single week. I believe this is the second season on HBO's The Deuce. Um, she also played in Wu Tang and American Saga on Hulu. I got Hulu specifically for this series. Didn't even have it up until now. So, Andrea, how are you? I'm trying to get this. Because <laughs> yeah, we don't, like we don't want to make head. up the hair. <laughs> no, no, I have a big hair. And then, like, I try to put on headphones and it doesn't work. I love so your sorry. hair. I, I love the, the color and Thank everything. You. So you want to leave the headphones off? or? I mean, I guess I can. Yeah? <laughs> I want to be a professional. Maybe. I know, right? We, we got to keep it cute and professional. You know, I have my candle here. I have I my my Fenty lip gloss that I have um, some shout feedback about. Ree. Yeah, shout out to Ree. We will talk about this lip gloss, you know, <laughs> on another <laughs> segment of the show. But, you know, I just want to give my audience some backstory about um, you and about our, you know, um, professional relationship. Um, there, it was about a year ago, almost this exact time. Yes. Um, I wanted to take my brand into a different direction, and I was filming um, a talk show pilot, and I had asked you to be one of my very first guests, and you didn't show up. You didn't show up. Wait, 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 I told you I wasn't mad about this. I wasn't mad because I knew that you're good people. And I knew that it wasn't personal. I was like, okay, something is going on. So after you didn't show, I automatically went to Hooters. Right? <laughs> I went to Hooters and I eventually learned that you were in the middle of this role. You had, you were auditioning at that point yeah. for Wu-Tang yeah. and American Saga <laughs> on Hulu. So let's talk about that space real quick. Talk about the audition process for you and, and securing and landing that role. Well, I just want to say thank you for still considering me good yes. people. Yes. <laughs> Especially after something like that. I mean, I always say in, in situations like that, you know, blame it on my mind and not my heart. Yeah. Sometimes what happens is in the chaos of trying to, like, get your regular life together uh -huh. and the auditions going, something gets lost in translation. Yeah. So not to blame on anyone else, I take full responsibility, but sometimes it doesn't, the correspondence doesn't go where it should right. in order to update everyone. Right. And right. so at the time I told certain people that I would be out of town and they forgot to follow up with why uh -huh. and to who and what was scheduled. Uh -huh. So when I finally remembered that, like I haven't heard from them right? and we finally had a discussion as to like, did they give everyone the update? Mm -hmm. I found that there were some holes considerably yours because uh -huh. you started calling and texting like hey what's going on right and so I was like wait I think somewhere along the lines something yeah. was like misconstrued and so I am fully apologetic but literally that day I had just gotten into LA for my test shoot mm. for Wu-Tang. Wow. And so that's why I was like, no matter what, I can't, but I really want to yeah, be yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, you couldn't, you couldn't have missed that. I, I would have beat you up <laughs> if you came to my show and not done that. Because when I tell you, you bodied oh, wow. that whole Thank role. Thank you. I mean, that entire series, it did something for the culture. But you said on that particular day, you were test reading for yeah. that. So, so talk about that for those who don't know what a test read is. Right, so a lot of times you have several callbacks and you have several audition phases before you actually know if you're going to get the role or not right. and so um with this particular role i ended up doing i think two or i want to say two i don't want to exaggerate so maybe two three regular auditions where mm -hmm. i got called back and called back and this was for a completely different role this wasn't mm -hmm. for mama ganja where you oh, guys really? see me this was actually for sheree really yes. wow. and it was so interesting because when i read the script you know, as an actress, you want the bigger roles or right. the roles that are more meaty. But there's and no so small roles. That's there what aren't been told. any small roles, but you know, as you do certain things, you do want different opportunities. And yeah. the more time you have with a character, the more you get to explore a lot of different things about them and mm -hmm. have more fun with it. So when you get a series regular, it's a big deal. Right. And so having this series regular audition was a big deal for me because mm -hmm. I was like on one end I really really want this I want to be a part of the story yeah. I like this character and you know like this would be a good progression in my acting career mm -hmm. but but I read Mama Ganja and even though she like even in the script that I got it wasn't a lot of her but just mm -hmm. the way she was described and given uh -huh. the energy behind uh -huh. I was like oh no I like her she, <laughs> she's more me uh -huh. so 
it was kind of interesting for me to be auditioning for a role that in the back of my mind I was always like dang but this other character though right, right. even though it was a small role like you tell yourself to have common sense and just go with the bigger role but mm. something in you always like knows what's for you and what's not for you you know this is confirmation because my first conversation with Jamel we were just talking about allowing the universe to speak to you right and it may speak to you in a way that is totally different from the way that you're speaking to yourself and the universe may put you on a different path and direction and trust that process my problem is trusting things. mine too honey. yeah i've been hearing it and i'm like okay honey child I, please but what about this and what <laughs> right. about that and yes you thought about this and wait now hold up when you say this did yeah. you mean that I or know. you know so i got questions that's my problem <laughs> Me too. but um i'm working through that and yeah so i went out there finally i got um i got a test shoot which is like supposed to be one of the biggest end all be all type of auditions for a role okay which is like sometimes they take it as far as so you know putting you into costume or mm -hmm. putting you into a certain environment that would be similar to the one that you're shooting in right um sometimes it's just you know like having everyone that's a part of the network and a part of the show that are like behind the scenes are there to watch you and like select you mm -hmm. um but in this particular instance it was just really um taking all the audition material and then running through it trying nice. different like ways to do them getting some direction mm -hmm. trying it with the different direction and um you know just sitting down and talking to the creators Riza and alex and mm -hmm. you know seeing what can be manifested and it was cool because that day is the first day that i saw um, um, Ale Alexandra. Mm -hmm. Who's that? She plays the mom. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. From um, Living Single. Yes. Uh, I, I forgot can't... her name. This is all. Just edit this part out. I understand. I understand. I, understand. I can't even believe that I forgot her name, but I just want to ask you real yeah, she quick. Played Maxi. What is going I on? Know. Right now? It is I know. And she was supposed to be on the show. We were in conversations. But yeah, that was the first time I saw her and I met her, and it was really cool. And I saw like a lot of other familiar faces. And yeah. So like it felt like I was supposed to be there. Right. And I felt like I gave a really great audition. Mm -hmm. It was just something that like I was like, I came back and I said to Dee, I said, you know, I really feel like I did did what I was supposed to do but it's nice. not it's not going to hit I'm like mm -hmm. I don't know like this is not it and he was just like well at least you did what you could do and they yeah. know that you're you're talented and mm -hmm. I was just like okay so who I'll is who is D oh he's my business yeah he's my business partner but he also nice. acts as like you know security a friend ah! <laughs> yeah I see you in your old black over there yeah, mug and smile for the camera why don't you <laughs> right um so yeah like I was a little bit like, huh, oh, I don't know how to feel. Like, I know mm -hmm. I didn't do bad, but I feel like something else is missing. And then I got a call back again. And uh -huh. I was just like, ugh. But it was for Mama Ganja. Nice. But the reason why I asked you, you know, who is it that you're referring to, D, is because I want people to understand about allowing people into your space, especially yeah. when you are a creative mind and when you're always asking questions like, am I doing the right thing? Did I wear the right thing? Um, did I talk to the right people? Right. And just having people in your space that can kind of, calm you down redirect you so i'm glad that you mentioned that because there was a testimony and a life lesson for someone tuning in that needed to hear that but i just want to ask you real quick yeah he tries. I mean. he tries he tries he tries yeah. we bump heads more than we actually like <laughs> get along but you know the saying um deal with the devil you know yes so like sometimes yes. i feel like people are in your corner so long that like that's a testimony in and of itself the True. effort there you True. know like you don't have to be perfect to be around yeah. someone you just have to maybe have you know the right intentions or whatever True. so you know his energy can be a little <laughs> but <laughs> I look he's mean, shaking <laughs> Look, we gotta be honest. Yeah, we gotta be honest. We gotta be <laughs> but honest. But I'm not perfect. I'm very flawed as well. Exactly. So like, yeah. I, I understand. But we're great friends. Um, I've cool. known him for a really long time. So, so you yeah. started off He's as like friends family. and then it became a working professional relationship or did well, it start the other way around? No, we went to school together. So it definitely nice. started what, as college, friends. college, high school? Yeah, we went to junior high school together. <sighs> A friend from way back. Oh, yeah, so that's where, that's where the Most of my, my friendships and my kinships are from, really? like, elementary school, junior high school, high school. That's so dope, because a lot of my elementary, junior high, high school friends, maybe about one or two. Um, and yeah, it's I not a lot, them, but the right, majority, hope, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, like, she knows me like the back of my hand. Shout out to Tasha Mabry. Um, you know, she's just a dope entrepreneur, um, female. But I want to ask you a question, if you don't mind. 
How old are you? Are you in your 20s, 30s? How old are you? I'm in my 20s. You're in your 20s? Really? Yeah. And this is why. Because when you, when I found out that you were um, in Wu-Tang and American Saga, and I was like, she's kind of young, right? How familiar were you with Wu-Tang? Oh, no, I'm very familiar. Okay, so I have an acting age and I have a real age. Either way, mm -hmm. I'm still in my 20s for now. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so, <laughs> um, whichever way you calculate, I'm still there. <laughs> but um, hang it on for dear life. No. Right, girl, tell me about it. <laughs> Change is coming around, around the corner. <laughs> no, but really, um, I'm very familiar with them regardless because of my culture, my environment. So, mm. like, I'm from Brooklyn. Shout out to Brooklyn <laughs> in the house. Can we hop out for that one? Yeah, so <laughs> me being from BK, home of Biggie and Jay. Yes. Um, that's just really, like... We're born with a, a sense of culture. Yeah, like, you just know a little... I just yeah. feel like Brooklyn people get it. We know a we little do. bit more. We, we do. like pay attention to a little yeah. bit more. We're a little bit more street savvy. You can't escape the culture right. in Brooklyn. I mean, you can walk down the streets and the music is just blaring from someone's car or from, you know, outside someone's I mean, there's graffiti window. everywhere. Yeah. When you really pay it... Like, like I said, I feel like Brooklynites, we ask questions. Yeah, and we, we like, do. we're not inside. Like, when you're younger and you're from Brooklyn, you're outside most of the time. Mm -hmm. You're going to come in. Whether you're hanging out in a different area or not, you're going to come across things that make you ask questions. Mm -hmm. And even if you're not asking them to another person, because you definitely have the culture of shut your mouth. Yeah. So yeah. even if you're not asking them to another person, what ends up happening is you're asking them in your own head and you're coming up with your own answers and you're paying attention to the economics of things mm -hmm. and you're seeing what buildings stay and you're still seeing what buildings go and you're seeing right. how they market themselves and how they've grown or if they've stayed the same. And in doing that, you learn a lot. True. But True. when it comes down to Wu-Tang, you know, just being from Brooklyn, like hip hop is a big deal in Brooklyn. You yeah. can't live in Brooklyn and not know hip hop so to true. some degree. So true. So with Wu-Tang having the impact that they did on the New York culture, uh -huh. it's just like, yeah, I know about it. I might not be the wizard of right. Wu-Tang, but I definitely love a lot of their music. Me too. Me too. To this day. And I know that Hulu series, I learned so much more. It just gave me a different lens and a different experience as to what shaped them to be this amazing, iconic group. Um, but I grew up with Wu-Tang, you know, as they grew up and you being in your 20s and also being on this series. What did you learn about Wu-Tang that you didn't even know before? What did I learn? They were really patient with one another, and they really are a family. I think mm. sometimes in the media that gets lost, and mm. I know that people always say that they were brothers or, you know, that they're a unit or that they're one, um, but then you hear about these different quarrels. So mm. seeing the family dynamic of them sitting at a table and them having discussions and them right. having meetings, that's a different type of business savvy that you don't see yeah. back then, you know, right. like even when it comes down to the family being broken or being, you know, incomplete in some some way they still found a way to kind of shift that mm -hmm. that 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 conversation and sit people down and have food and have discussions and argue and you know be snappy and a lot of people can't even get that far so I think that's yeah. beautiful because I don't sit down at the table <laughs> so, yeah that that yeah. that's a very interesting point how no matter what happened and the fights and the quarrels they were able to bring it back and understand that we're a family foremost for a group and the way that they showed family because a lot of people say family and what they mean is that you just have to deal with me through all my bs right. and sometimes you know that's just not true that's not yeah. the case you have to be able to do to discuss things you have mm -hmm. to be able to get through arguments you have to be able to have a level of transparency and yeah. honesty and you have to be able to call people out yeah. and so there was a lot of sitting down at the table breaking bread mm -hmm. but also i'm calling you out True. like you're being lazy and you're being stupid and right. i think this and they did it in their way honestly you know this is not verbatim but i feel like that in and of itself is very inspiring yeah it was it was you know i, I wish that more people could be in that space you know i'm glad and you know and and blessed to have a friend who can kind of tell me things i can tell her things and we're not caught up in our feelings right. you can't do that with a lot of people and mm -hmm. i have a lot of enemies because i stand in my truth and damn it if you know i see you you, you i see your pussy print through your, your spandex like, i'm gonna tell you we're going there we're going there we're going there like i'm gonna be honest with things i like to mind my business <laughs> You know, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, but your also, vagina is your business. 
the way it gets ventilation is up to you. So again, in those areas, I mind my business. I just had to tell someone. But no, one I time. definitely. She was a friend. No, but if she's a friend, she it's different. Friend. Like I'm the friend also where I want you to tell me if I have a booger in my nose. I want right. you to tell me if you know, like, right. oh girl, take a mint. You yeah. know, like I like that. Shout out to my cousin um, Anika as well. She runs Boss Babes, do brunch, and you know we have that back and forth relationship right. also because you can't do that with everyone. Yeah can't do that we deal with each other <laughs> so another um role that you bodied on hbo's the Deuce. thank you <laughs> girl wait, wait, before we even I go have, into like, that this much room but still you anything, bodied it at such show. a young age and we're going to talk about that but let me just wrap up that um conversation and questioning about wu-tang and american saga yeah. okay. will it be renewed I don't know really i mean I'm maybe waiting. i'm out the loop you know honestly around the the beginning of that, maybe even before then, I just kind of like removed myself from a lot. Mm -hmm. And like I was in a mental space of trying to figure out, you know, what I was going to go into 2020 doing. Mm -hmm. um, of course, acting still, that's a, mm -hmm. a dream that I'm going to keep on manifesting and unfolding, mm -hmm. but just other ventures and things as well. And so I haven't really kept up with the conversation on renewal, mm -hmm. but I know when the season was wrapping up that we were in such strong talks mm -hmm. and we had great numbers mm -hmm. and there was a lot of like good stuff to be happy and proud about yeah. so i could be wrong in saying that they haven't even announced or said yet mm -hmm. i don't even know if they feel like there's a need but i know that it there's made such an impact i know it who loved it i yeah. know that everyone's really happy with it yeah. and i think if they gave it a bigger chance it, mm -hmm. it, it could do so much more yeah um, i think it did a lot for rizza is a phenomenal leader amazing He's super like understanding respectful kind and so i really feel like it's only up for the wu-tang like saga period whether it's on hulu whether it's in a different form or you know mm -hmm. so yeah i hope so so for all of you listening in make sure that you let hulu know that we need a season two of wu-tang and american saga because it was amazing season now, two season you, three but you know, only if you bring me. Uh, okay, we're gonna put that out of the universe. Let me kidding. find out you got a little singing chops going no, on there. No. <laughs> so, no. you know, the purpose of the show, you know, I want to connect the big OGs to the little OGs, got right? It. Yes. And your role on HBO's The Deuce. Ooh. You're in your 20s, so I'm gonna consider you a little OG. Aww. You have an opportunity to experience the the splendid heavyweight of 42nd street or the deuce back in my era it was a, a place that you did not want to be I you know it. i would you know tell my parents on easter listen mom you know my friends now we want to go to the movies that's what we did back then on easter and my parents definitely had a problem so i had to sneak and go to 42nd you guys street went to the movies on easter yes that was a big thing either I the wish. movies or coney island okay coney island was definitely an easter thing. yeah okay. yeah but that's that was a part of the culture on 42nd street so being um, a character on that series, what did you learn about the Deuce that you had no idea? Because you see it all in its glitz and glamours now and, you know, in 2019. You know, I really loved being a part of the show. Um, I'm really excited that I got to be a part of a story that's like that. But what uh -huh. I learned is that the men that we see in that environment mm -hmm. love black women. Yes. And Melody I wish magic. that that was a little bit... Um, I wish that was explored a little bit more mm. um, instead of feeling like we're here and there and like we're a commodity, like just being very honest and transparent. I learned in my own research that, you know, like that was a time where they tried a lot of different things mm -hmm. and the thing that they felt the freest, especially because of the disco and the music was through black women. Right. Right. And our bodies and our makeup and our hair and everything, mm -hmm. our lips mm -hmm. were just really alluring to them. Right. And so even though it didn't necessarily fit the story they were telling for the deuce, mm -hmm. I was able to learn that there was a whole other movement that was being orchestrated, mm -hmm. even with the LGBTQ community. And, right. you know, like it was about in its own weird, sick and twisted way. Mm -hmm if you really take a step back in its own weird way amongst like all the other things going on it was it was rooted in love it was it was you know so that was a time 
a, a time period piece. So was that the 70s or the 80s? So it went through and then it ended through. in the 80s. Okay. Okay. I well, love approaching the 80s. I love yeah. to do something. You know, as you were talking, I didn't even think about it through that lens about the exploration of, you know, the love of the black woman. And you, you're seeing a lot of um, diversity and mixed relationships. But the, as you were saying that, I was like, was that attributed to prostitutes are always seen in that way, in a sexual way, you know, black, green, white, purple, whatever, pussy has no color, you know? So was it a but real I was exploration taking of that? out the prostitution category and just talking about in that day and age and in that era, along with the music, the makeup and all the mayhem with the drugs and AIDS, you know, becoming a bigger deal because of the drugs and the, the promiscuity and with the music being so vibrant and this being a huge like party era and mm -hmm. you know go out be glammed it was kind of like just to even see bernice in a position where she's behind a bar and she's trusted mm -hmm. like that's also because of the relationship that bobby and her have cultivated which mm -hmm. is not talked about but it has to be hinted obviously because he's going off and doing his own thing when you right. watch the series you know he's had his fun mm -hmm. and he continues to have it and he wants to you know have his freedom so you know he kind of keeps her there mm -hmm. but that type of trust still comes from the fact of there's still an underlying like love right between right. So let's just talk about power a little bit because we have to wrap this up um, very soon. Um, I know you're no longer on power. You are another character that we absolutely love to hate. <laughs> but do you still love watch? Destiny? Do oh, no, we did not. Yes, yeah. Destiny kind of steered Tyreek in all the wrong direction and didn't give him the support that he needed. But they were both young and very impressionable. See, that is not true. She what? didn't steer him anything. Hmm. She was used... Yeah, she was used. She was it's, used by I, her own family. By her own family. She it, was it, manipulated. That a That's the word, because that happens to a lot of young girls. And nowadays. he left her stranded for dead. So and true. she didn't do anything with the intention mm -hmm. of, I'm going to destroy a family or hurt someone that I care about. She was encouraged to do that through her But family. she didn't know. Mm. She was actually threatened and forced, you see? True, true. But do you and she didn't power? know that was... I haven't. No? no, so you just was on the show and you left and you like that. No, so before the sh before I even auditioned, mm -hmm. I was a I was watching. Okay. Like I'm such a fan of the show. Don't me get too. me wrong. Like Omari Hardwick does excellent work. Amazing job. <laughs> like I was a fan of his before, you know. So mm -hmm. you know, kudos to him. Um, and then I did the show. I audition. I auditioned. I got it. And then I filmed. And you know. We it was a great journey, a big journey, and I maintained watching it up until season five. Mm -hmm. So when I say that I haven't been able to watch it, I just mean like I haven't gotten through season gotcha. six yet. Gotcha. But gotcha. that's still an intention of mine to make Good. sure I get through. But again, I took myself myself out of certain spaces, so I haven't been, you know, keeping up with everything that I used to keep up with gotcha. just for me and my mental. Cause capacity. you're busy, honey. Busy well, and booked. No. Sometimes I really, some, but sometimes I, part of self care is just taking a step back. So true. And getting mentally like together. That's a word. Cause you know, there are some people, I've been doing this every Sunday, I shut down entirely. I was there are thinking some people about who that. don't understand that. And I'm not apologizing for that space. I need to refuel because I think of myself as a bank. You know, when I'm walking <laughs> outside, you know, I'm constantly making withdrawals to right. other people. Sundays is a day for me to make the deposits. You know, I just feel I gotta like do it. in the acting world, sometimes we're constantly looking for approval or validation. And I've never really been that mm -hmm. person. So gotcha. it's always been harder for me to be in a space where I have to say, well, accept me for this role or accept mm -hmm. me for, mm -hmm. you know, this talent or, you know, do that. And then doing it often so consistently and trying to maintain um, go, 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 go. Sometimes you're there and mentally you're just not there. You're just like somewhere else and you find yourself in la la land. Yeah. And so for me, it's just kind of like I found that I was becoming, the more I did, the more I lost interest mm. in a lot of things and I just wasn't as motivated mm -hmm. and I wasn't, you know, feeling the the positive energy anymore. Mm. So I decided to take a step back, not even just because I was giving into people. I just wasn't necessarily all of myself. Mm. So I just wanted to get back to a mental space mm. where I felt like I could be more present and there and aware. And I just 
now I'm coming to turn like Beyonce does something where she only talks to people. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know if she still does this, but years ago, as I was a child, she was on, I think, the Tyra show. Mm -hmm. And she said that she only talks to people on Sundays or she had a separate really? phone line that, you know, she spoke to people on Sundays. And I don't know if it was an exaggeration, if it was a joke. I was young when I saw it anyway. Mm -hmm. But I thought that was really smart. Yeah. So that's why I'm going with this. <laughs> I just found out about two days ago on my phone, it has a do not disturb feature. And mm -hmm. I'm going to commit at... A, a specific time every single day I'm going to put on the do not disturb <laughs> feature because I am tired of the No, literally, I've never taken it off. I put it on mm. one day and I never took it I'm, off. I'm gonna I, when I look at my phone is when I look at my phone and I see a text. I have to do that. Nothing so I, we have to, you know, wrap, wrap up. it up. Yeah, but I want to play a little short game with you. Okay. Right? okay. So I am going to name a big OG. Now that big OG can be a person or it can be the name of a brand. Now, once I name that big OG, I want you to give me the first word that comes to your mind. Okay. You got it? Yeah. This is my favorite one right here. <laughs> Lil' Kim. Badass. Ah, yes. She's okay. badass. Denzel Washington. I used to, on the, now I put to the handling like a real bit. Yes, that's my, that's my honey. Hey, baby. <laughs> Denzel Washington. Um... This is not the word that I want to use, but just graceful. Graceful. Yeah, I feel like there's a ma more masculine term that I'm looking for, but you said quick, so I'm mm -hmm. just going to say it. Okay, let me throw out this big OG brand. Let's see if you are familiar with this one. FUBU. Of course. Okay. Legendary. Uh, and this is one of my favorite shows of all time. It's a different world. It's a different world woo, than where you come from. Uh, yes, it is now. Um, Whitley. <laughs> That's what Dwayne. I think of. Dwayne. She was just so funny. And yeah. like, I have a friend that I literally call Whitley or Hillary really? because that's her personality. Uh -huh. So like, whenever I think of a different role, I think of her and I think of those characters. So, hey, Victoria. <laughs> wow. Well, okay. So one last question. Okay. What's up next for you? Um, still auditioning on hold for a few things, so I'm just hoping that something sticks and something's mm -hmm. really there. And then I have the, I have a platform that I'm going to be launching in 2020 that nice. I'm excited about. Nice. I don't want to talk about. I was in positions before I spoke about things that I didn't want to speak about yet, just mm -hmm. because I was told to. So oh, I don't want to speak about it yet. We understand. But you know, it's something for the community, and I feel like it could be really positive, and so I'm excited. Nice, nice. So I'm sure, you know, my, my listeners were captivated by um, your words and your conversation and your energy. <laughs> and I'm sure they want to follow you on Instagram. Give us your Instagram handle. I am Andrea Rachel. I-A-M-A-N-D-R-E-A-R-A-C-H-E-L. I'm glad you spelled it because, you know, some people who had a poor public school <laughs> education, they may not know. <laughs> I-A-M-A-N-D-R-E-A-R-A-C-H-E-L. And if you can't find that, <laughs> something's wrong. Okay. But Andrea, thank you so much. Thank for you guys for having this me. This is conversation. I really appreciate it. Thank you. It? Yeah. Uh -uh. You have great energy. No, oh, you're really good. You. No, you're good. <laughs> I, I appreciate And this it. was fun. It was simple and cool. It was like yeah. the perfect of everything. So I just you're wanted good. to be a casual conversation. No, you know, nothing good. tight and tense. You know, let's just act. And like the way that you blessed Jamel after his phone conversation, I need the same kind of blessing. Oh, I was going to give you uh, that. Okay. okay. I was definitely, that's how, you know, I always want to make sure that was beautiful. That everything just wraps itself up in love yes. and you know we will always stay connected because i Thank think that you. you are amazing thank you you're going places <laughs> you're beautiful thank you. you know so the universe is going to give you everything that you need what i'm going to ask you to do is to stay true to yourself thank and you. give yourself the time that you need so that you can stand in your truth yes i don't and wish block anything. out all of that noise okay because we definitely want to continue seeing you thank on you. our television screens thank where you where you connect the big ogs <laughs> to the little ogs and you do it so gracefully thank you you like that right <laughs> i do <laughs> thank you. okay and i like that pinhead let me tell you that was one of the movies when i was a kid that really, really used to scare the living daylight out of me <laughs> can we put that in there can we let's grab that so that you know the um the viewers 
can see, see things like this date me this is how you start to figure out how old i, really I know am. <laughs> this is the purpose of this platform so oh, yeah. you want to connect the big ogs to the little ogs so i'm yeah. glad that we did so you know with such style and grace shout out to biggie because that's a biggie lyric mm -hmm. um thank you for tuning in to another amazing edition of sonya on air make sure that you follow me on instagram sonya on air and you can catch all sonya on sh on air show streaming on spotify on itunes on google podcast podcast go i Heart Radio, YouTube, and on my website, www.sanyaonair.com. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Smooches dolls. Mwah.